into this middle fort. Level 10s are online. It is, oh, it's called All Shall, All Shall Burn. My bad, March of Sin is what let him be able to move with it back before the rework. So looking at these heroics, as this push keeps going in into the keep, Mosh Pit, Cloak of Shadows, Sound Barrier, Leaping Strikes, and Gravo Bomb from Uncomfortably Numb into Flailing Swipe, Wrath of the Berserker, Blessed Shield, Demonic Invasion? Yeah, and Hyperion for Die for Cat Girls. And Silver Arrow, you are correct. That first Web Weaver phase, definitely stronger for Die for Cat Girls than the first Web Weavers of Uncomfortably Numb. You'll want to get those first Web Weavers to get the to get the advantage, but they're so weak compared to the second wave. It is, it's absurd. You've got to hold on to your lead. And Die for Cat Girls coming down into the bottom lane, trying to get some pressure on this bottom fort. Yeah, absolutely right. Getting pressure on that mid fort, forcing Uncomfortably Numb to either stay there and defend, or, uh, or lose out on pressure to the side lanes by not being able to go clear. A huge advantage for Die for Cat Girls. And they're gonna get a double turn in here. This is going to be big as well. These lanes are all pushed out. The only lane even close to not pushed out is the bottom lane in the middle of the lane. And we're gonna see a big five man push coming into this top keep. Die for Cat Girls coming up. There's a condemn. Sailor Swift, how are your stacks? My dude, 250. You've got the uh, passive effect. Still stacking damage though. There's Hyperion coming out onto the keep as the Web Weaver gets there. This keep will not stand or I will eat my dog. No, I won't even, okay, good. It goes down silly, you're safe. You're safe, girl, don't worry. Um, <laughs> that keep just didn't stand a chance. The Web Weaver barely had to do anything. Again, the sieging pressure coming out of Die for Cat Girls, especially with, especially with the uh, map health, really big. Lunara just not enough damage to clear. Valera coming in from behind, going to blind the Rainer, but Teeth just getting so much help from, from his team. Shamhat with the root combo, I believe, absolutely catching Valera into that growing, lurking arm. <laughs> two cores are, or two keeps are down. Another really strong web weaver phase coming from die for cat girls let's check uh look at oh my goodness see lucio with reverse amp is stupid a thousand seconds of uh cc time just because of reverse amp it's absurd boss coming up die for cat girl is going to go ahead and try to drive the nail into the coffin with this boss, Uncomfortably Numb, looking to uh, clear out the lanes, but I think this boss is going to do it, especially if Die for Cat Girls can pick up another kill here. But I just don't see, I don't see the clear potential from Uncomfortably Numb. L Lunara is kind of capable of it, Splintered Spear with the, uh, but didn't take the improved PVE damage at four. That's gonna be, that's gonna hurt. Boss still at full health, coming in to this core, but the fight is behind the boss. A nice gravel bomb combo. There's the sound barrier. Sham hat looking really low. Stukov run out, a great mosh pit coming from the ETC. Valyria gonna finish off the Stukov, but the the core going low. At Sonia and Asvidan on the core with the boss, 20, 10, 10% 10 health. The fight happened way by the keep but the boss in two went through and gonna go ahead and finish off the keep or the core and that's gonna be game number two over to die for cat girls in spectacular fashion barely level 16 into level 15 only seven deaths the entire game those are low low death count high action Really well played by Die for Cat Girls. I think the draft for Uncomfortably Numb struggled into it a little bit, a little bit. Uh, didn't have the clear. I think I think Uncomfortably Numb expected to just be ahead on player count the entire game, so they wouldn't have to worry about having to clear. And as soon as they 
as soon as they started losing some people, especially under the, uh, I guess, when they lost people under that, that fort for the first turn in front comfortably numb, because that's most of the kills that happened into them, that's when things just went sideways. So here are the stats. Asmodan and Lunara topping the charts. Let's take a look at the talents again. If uh, you like what you see or you're confused about what you see, while I uh, take a second, let me uh, let me know, and uh, we'll go into game number three. All right, and I am back. Uh, I don't really know how to build Gazlo. I suck at Lucio. Asmodan, uh, just a lot of heroes that I don't play. Not really sure about the builds, but it worked out for Die for Cat Girls. So we about to go into game number, t number three. Shall take a look. I do have a special guest, one of my favorite co-casters, Dairy Doodle. Hi, Dairy Doodle. That's what Vel calls him at times. This is Darian. There's Sylvanas. Oh, we just chilling on a Saturday. Yeah, we just chilling on a Saturday. Rawr. He can look vicious. But he's just a sweet boy. He might be on. He might be on a little bit of the crack. You want to show them your. You want to show them your your not crazy eye. See, normal dairy, crazy dairy. Normal dairy, crazy dairy. Yeah. All right. So game number three coming up. I know. I know that y'all are here to see the puppers. But really, I think y'all want to watch game number three because this. This was a very dominant game number one, then a very dominant the other way game number two. So all bets are off. The gloves have been gauntleted and things like that for this uh, for this match. So really super interested in how this work in how this turns out. So we are going to that's game number two. Game number three is going to be in Fernal Shrines. Looking at Infernal Shrines. Let's take a look here. So over here, we have the draft. We got Kael'thas, Zuka, Phoenix, Diablo, Dhaka, into Anna, Greymane, Sonya, Joanna, Malthiel. Sonya, Malthiel, I think worth first pick. Kael'thas, yeah, I don't think he's as contested in competitive play. Diablo might have been worth first pick. I don't think you first pick Phoenix. I don't think you first pick the Haka here. I think, I, and I don't know, someone could correct me if they know or are familiar with the match, but I, I feel like Uncomfortably Numb went for the map pick here because I think there's three very viable first picks on the side of Die for Cat Girls. They're strong. I think Diablo is the only first pick, though, on... on 
on the side of uncomfortably numb because while the haka is great he's mobile he can get around he's not a very popular hero in the off lane so yeah that that's that's my thoughts i don't know there's a reason i'm in gold right in fact i got in plat i was like i'm in plat i can't say well there's a reason i'm in gold if i'm in plat on my streams so i lost games with my friends and said oh well i'm in gold now suck it um basically what happened so infernal shrines interesting draft here and uh let's okay the only black cat you were uh i'm gonna assume that you were there oh thank you thank you for the clarification and we'll and then the we'll leave the uh and just a reminder no spoilers thank you for the information on the draft so so joanna first pick so that means uncomfortably numb did pick this map after losing game number two or these are, were reported wrong who knows but uh game so game number three infernal shrines joanna first pick into a kt stukov probably i believe the stukov because shamhat played a really good stukov in that second game and taking taking the hand taking stukov out of her hands i think would would have been absolutely important so say goodbye to the say goodbye to the pupper we are going into game number three. Oh, that's not the button i wanted to hit button 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 i'm good at this i promise All right, so good luck's going out. We have Kick Naz, Kicking As, I imagine is what it is, on the Dehaka, famous on Kael'thas, Novus on the Dibbles, Mr. Monkey Man on Phoenix, and the Spectre rocking Stukov. That is your game, not your game, that is your blue team uncomfortably numb and over here representing hollow live gaming hopefully maybe one day looking for that sponsorship is sailor twift on the mouth eel sir noble on the joanna teeth on gray main baron those teeth yet yeah, again skather on sonia and sham hat rocking the old lady anna but we already have a flip on the joanna iron skin coming out sleepy diablo there is the zoning lurking arm and a whole lot of nothing at the moment. Probably Sailor Swift trying to get some damage onto the Spectre and the Stukov. Greymane jumping in across. Is that enough dot damage? 25. Yes. First blood, though, over to the Phoenix on Uncomfortably Numb. Joanna good to go down first. We missed that up here. Hopefully you saw it. As I was talking about Stukov dying to the mouth deal. And Dahaka getting out with almost no health. But Diablo, not quite as fortunate, loses all the health, takes the quick back to the Hall of Storms. Holy crap, that was fast. Yeah, I expect to see a cursed bullet out of out of Greymane. Although, he went go for the throat last time, but they don't have resets to get off a of go for throat. I think, other than go for throat itself, I think bullet's the way to go. Uh, Monkey Man did play Dahaka the first game. Um, yes, Monkey Man was the off lane on Dahaka, I believe. Because they also played Phoenix the first game. Um... If anybody wants to check the VOD real quick and tell me who played what, game one, that'd be cool. Early, early siege camps for die for cat girls taking their own and the bottom one. They are really flexing their rolls around on uncomfortably numb then, huh? Because, yeah, wasn't, uh, was kicking, <sighs> who was the ETC? I mean, the Joe, I don't, oh my goodness, I don't know. Who was the Joe? Three for one, or three V one down in the bottom lane, both teams. Now level four, a little bit of an XP advantage over to die for cat girls. Grayman gonna go ahead and get onto this bruiser camp with the help of the sham hat. Sham, wow. Sonya just chilling in the bush. And I had no minions to kill there. Why do I be up forward? And so Sonya chilling back, just 
not want to get ganked, want to get some soak, some free soak, maybe some harass onto the Dahaka. Dahaka at half health, probably has a lot of health to go. We can check on that. We will hide that real quick. I kept forgetting to do it. Bruiser camp out for die for cat girls. Uncomfortably numb. Looking at getting there, but a nice charge onto the Joanna as the invade comes in for die for cat girls. A strong invade onto this infernal shrine. Five v four, or onto this bruiser camp. Stuka Phoenix going to fall thanks to the engage. Whatever. What is it called? What is the e? Not disengage, but the one before that called for gray main that is a triple kill and the bruiser steal for die for cat girls what a pickup on the side of dfc coming into this first shrine silver arrow thank you so much the specter was on phoenix famous was the joanna but famous now on the kt specter on stuka mr monkey man was the dahaka is now the phoenix and kicking ass is now the Dahaka. What a what a shuffle. Do the shuffle. Do, 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 do. Oh wait, that's the hustle. Looks like an easy shrine pickup. Do they delay it? No, they're just gonna go ahead and grab it. You're gonna go ahead and get that pressure into. Oh yeah, age isn't playing now. Kicking ass. Kicking ass is who's in now. Yeah, I did. Age was the Jane. Did, you're right. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, update. John Cena coming in. This Arcane Punisher going to be a little weak as it is the first one. Four or five minutes, and it's the Arcane one. Used to be the worst to fight. Now, kind of not so bad. Uh, but Uncomfortably Numb does do a great job of pulling, them, of pulling the Punisher behind the fort. That fort's still going to fall, but Uncomfortably Numb able to get some damage out without having to worry about the extra pressure from the heroes. John Cena, again, jumping over the wall, this time from the top rope, getting a two or three man stun. Famous looking a little bit low, but Die for Cat Girl saying, we're not gonna overstay. We're not gonna take it. We're just gonna chill, be happy with what we got. Rotate, play the map. Rotate and play the map. What you doing? What you doing, Sonya? What you doing? One level lead for Die for Cat Girls. Both teams picking up their siege camps. No one on that bottom one. The map looking pretty red though right now with that bruiser camp having been picked up on the side of Die for Cat Girls. That will be spawned in another 90 seconds. We might have a face off at this bottom camp. No. Both teams go up, try to get some clear action. And it looks like Uncomfortably Numb is going to have the camp advantage here with the way the uh, Siege uh, ended up going into the lane. But Dive Kakro is going to get this bottom Siege as well. Five man together down here in the bottom lane. They just now hit level 10. We got the Nano Boost. We did get the Cursed Bullet. We got Tormented Souls. Blessed Shield and Aya for the Sonya. Level 10 is about to be here for uncomfortably numb let's give it a look here as they get picked up we do get isolation on the hacka flailing swipe on stukov apoc on the diablo and pyroblast on kalthos who are we pyroblasting okay oh because anna can't heal herself we uh, black soulstone is completed for diablo Diablo is now a real boy. I believe we're delaying the planet. I mean, the I meant purification salvo. Uh, pick up for uh, dude buddy Phoenix. And a nice invade. Without using Pyro, goes ahead and kills the Anna. They're going to get this Bruiser Camp and kind of take control of the game back. Because their Bruiser Camp is also up. They can go get it basically for free right now. But we do see a bot lane push from both offlaners down here for Die for Cat Girls as the Bruiser Camp gets picked up with basically no damage dealt. Little, little tiny bit on that fort. This next altar coming up, it is a Mortar Shrine. 
So that's gonna do some good burst damage. It's gonna be hard, harder to siege with, because uh, it's just some like splash burst damage, but and not, and not that continuous damage on the structures or the uh, freezing uh, building disabling. But it is a strong punishment nonetheless, and really good to combo with to kill a hero. There's a nice four-man leap coming out of the Sonya. Apoc trying to defend is going to. To, wait, Spectre's on the same team. So the APOC not going to get value on to die for cat girls and Diablo Soulstone gets consumed. The hockey goes down. M -m -m Mega kill over for die for cat girls with the triple kill coming in for Sonya. What a huge leap over the wall. Oh my lord, that is exactly what die for cat girls needed to seize control back, assert themselves, and say, you know what, this is our map. So free clear onto this shrine, uncomfortably numb, catching out Sailor Twift, Mouthfield trying to get a little bit of extra play down here on this fort, Diablo coming in, there is the Kael'thas Pyroblast going to come in, can Anna save the Mouthfield with enough heals of time, yes! Anna trying to save Sailor Twift does get stunned into the wall, but if that was a pale horse, it was not, it was just Death Reach. But mount, being able to mount up and run away from that pyroblast gave Anna enough time to heal the to heal the Malthiel enough to survive the pyroblast. All while that border punisher gets picked up in the middle lane. Get John Cena onto Diablo. There's the leap again. Diablo, no health, no souls, going to fall yet again. Blessed Shield going to hold famous still. But Sailor Twift, 400 health. Is he gonna? Yeah, gonna get away. Sonya just going all about the jumps. That middle fort goes down. This puncher is going to get cleared up. Sonya gonna go ahead and take the siege cat. Does Kel'thas smell it? No. Sonya did take a shower this morning. Kel'thas not going to smell these uh, these spear trackers getting picked up. Oh, maybe just in time throws that nether that uh, nether wind out. Nether lapse, gravity lapse, but doesn't hit anything. Doesn't find those siege camps getting picked up. Die for cat girls. Go. Oh yeah, absolutely silver. That. Oh, mouth deal is horrifying. Um. No. Uh, there's two polymorphs in the game. There's Brightwing with the W, and there's uh, Medivh with the ult. Oh, okay. We're, um, uh, we're we're just we're just having fun. Okay, have fun. Continue. Black Harvest getting finished for Malthiel, but in the meantime, Kael'thas goes down. Also, Joanna. So a trade there with the quest completion in favor of Uncomfortably Numb. But losing the tank's pretty big. They do have two frontliners in Malthiel and Sonya, and that Tormented Souls is going to help with that frontline a little bit. Given giving that armor, it doesn't give armor anymore. I thought it gave armor. There is the curse bullet on to the Diablo who stuns back in, trying to get a little bit of extra health. Not enough follow up that last right, so it would been really good there. Finish off that Diablo with Sailor Swift in the back line. Going to be two for one, but Malthiel, or two versus one, Malthiel falls to the Phoenix Dukov giant arm. Phoenix chasing with that laser beam, but the camp gets this bottom fort, it looks like. And everybody's alive again, except for Malthiel. Oh wait, I don't think anybody died on the side of Uncomfortably Numb. Red team pinging for that bruiser camp. Let's go pick it up. Let's keep this map pressure asserted while Uncomfortably Numb cleans up and tries to recover. Three forts for nothing right now in favor of Die for Cat Girls. Looking for an opportunity to finish up this game. Almost 12 minutes in. That's about as fast as they finished up game number two. Kael'thas getting caught out. There's the Condemn. Is it? No, not going to have the follow-up. The drag onto Teed. Greymane in the Purification Salvo going to go down thanks to that wall bang from Diablo. And a camp invade. Sailor Swift and Joanna on Sir Noble trying to get in, trying to stop it, but instead Malfiel is going to fall. Phoenix picking up that extra kill. This bruiser camp gonna go over. 
Uh, Tormented Souls is is a really strong ability if you don't have the execution power. If you're going into sh if if you get countered by like the Thief Shields, if Anduin takes Salvation, there's a bunch of things that can hard counter last rights. But it also is really. Uh, I, I thought it used. I thought it gave armor. I guess it doesn't anymore. You're right. It's a very rare pick, but it usually feels. A, I think it ends up being effective. It's just such a passive effect. It's like tranquility, right? It feels, eh, if, but it has a has some big impacts. So right now, I'm comfortably numb. Going in for this top shrine. Dive cat girls coming in. They. There's the leap going to get dropped on the Kael'thas. Kael'thas, 200 health, gonna try to get a little bit of extra damage off on the shrine, I guess, before being absolutely murdered by Sonya. The charge quest gets finished by Diablo. Apoc had already been used, uh, but they're just chasing. Uncom uncomfortably numb, being chased back into their keep by Die for Cat Girls. You're gonna lose two. Okay, gave armor when it was released. Thank you, Black Cat. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that clarification. The uh, uncomfortably numb, doing exactly what they should do. They're up two heroes. They have a Sonya. Sonya, go to the shrine. We're gonna take camps. In fact, Sonya, while we see people on the map, maybe don't finish the shrine. Maybe take it to 39 and wait. And you know, Silvera, that might be the thing they're going for as well. Uh, the cooldown reductions and keeping the la keeping the uh, the passive effect, what's it called, Reaper's Mark on AOE heroes and just queuing the entire world. I can see that being really strong, absolutely. We get the ping for nano boost coming out. All heroics except for APOC are ready, but by the time this is engaged, APOC will be available. There's the jump. There is the leap onto the Dahaga. Dahaga gonna fall for the like Not quite in time to stop the murder, but. It looks like Nano Boost out on Mouthiel, but the uh, the Tormented Souls didn't go off in time. I don't know. It was hard to tell. It's hard to see. Oh, uh, no. Okay, based on when Mouthiel died, he had already used it. It had expired. The Frozen Punisher disabling these buildings, going to prevent it being, uh, <laughs> being cleared out as fast. They go one for one on the objective. Did, uh, hang on. Did Diablo die? Diablo still has souls. Diablo did not die. So one for one and getting the objective. Interesting trade out for die for cat curls. Really ineffective punisher that game or that 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 phase. Naps, welcome to the area. Yes, my casting radar rating is a boosted, boosted all to hell. We know that I am a wood league caster, but here we go. We're doing a triple cast today. Thank you for coming. One, yeah, absolutely, Philip. One for one, really good for uncomfortably numb, especially into that Punisher. That's gonna help them stay in this game. Next Punisher is going to be Mortar down in the bottom lane right now. Uncomfortably numb, trying to not get picked, trying to get these lanes cleaned up a little bit. Die for Cat Girls want to keep as much pressure on the map as possible without giving a free mistake too uncomfortably numb. Uncomfortably numb, looking to force a mistake, force the gray main or the mouthfeel out of position and just obliterate with the Diablo and the uh, and the Kael'thas. Gonna have to get a pick here somewhere to come back into this game. They do still have all their keeps. But they got catapults coming in every lane. And we do see Uncomfortably Numb say, you know what? Our camp's up. We don't want to give a free kill. Let's just let's just chillax a little bit. Let's go get some camps. Let, let's uh, make some mercenary friends. Pick up pick up some dogs, a shaman. It's cool. It's cool. <laughs> On which team, Philip? Oh, level 20s are out. Silver, thank you for the reminder. Level 20s are picked up. We got improved nano boost. We've got 
uh, t Hunter's Blunderbuss. We've got Feel No Pain, Storm Shield? Is that Storm Shield or Personal Shield? Blinded by the Light, which is Storm Shield with cooldown reduction. And none can stop death on the Malthiel. And Diablo with Dying Breath going to get those extra Apox. We've got Flamethrower, the uh, Stuka top off Singularity Charge. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And uh, Contagion. Wait, wait, so which team do you want to have the Sylvanas? So we do have 6v6s now as, Mal as Diablo can come back, Malthiel can come back. These fights are going to last forever now. Shrine is active, being picked up by Die for Cat Girls. They got five there. They smell the pressure. They're backing up. Diablo and Haka are smelly boys. There's a wall bang onto Sailor Swift in the flip under the APOC. Not going to get the not going to get follow up on the combo, but here comes the purification level and all five big damage. Mouthfield going to fall, being slowed down, being silenced, but none can stop death. So Malfield's back, Diablo's back, Phoenix is the only perma dead. So right now, 5v4 once both those heroes get back. But Pyro Blast onto the Greymane who is sip, sip right before dying to the Pyro. No, my dude, what are you doing? But Stukov and Kel'Thas fall in the process as Malfield is back and ready for action. Sonya just going absolutely ham in the back line. So 4v2 right now as both Malfield and Diablo have returned. The Haka is gonna die with the race strike from the Malthiel and all of that yellow health bar from the Ana and the Malthiel on to Diablo. Race strike back in and <laughs> just an absolutely a, a second kill? M -m -m Mega kill on to Uncomfortably Numb. Die for Cat Girls with the Punisher, with the Ace, post level 20. This is going to be the series over for die for cat girls right now i am absolutely sure of it phoenix is back up but what can he do into the burst of this mortar punisher there is the leap again and the condemn gonna hold phoenix still to stun that ancient spear not gonna let phoenix teleport away ggs are out what a set over to die for cat girls congratulations is there anybody on die for cat girls in the chat right now that maybe I can ask a couple questions. While we're doing that, let me put a poll up. Um, oh, here, let me put talents up. Uh, there is a quick look at the talents. Here are the stats. Let me put a poll up for the next game or the next set. Uh, where is the poll button? There we go. Create a new poll. Which match next? We've got B West. Soak every lane versus Phoenix Rising Emerald or E West. We're going to the West Coast either way. Deep Fried Ming Balls versus Liquid Metal. Um, you know what, if you want to, I'll let you use extra points to, uh, to vote. We'll run a five minute vote and see if I can get a, uh, cool. There is the poll. It's up. Uh, sure. Um, well, uh, I'm also happy to Crizzo with the 10 or with the thousand bits. Crizzo, thank you so much for the donation i really appreciate it uh from coming in from bull moose party though you don't even have an investment in any of these matches was it it might be spooky ghosts uh philip can you help me out with that uh here let me i gotta let me manage this poll 
Uh, whatever. Okay, it might be Spooky Ghosts instead. It is, yeah, it is Spooky Ghosts. So it's actually Soak Every Lane versus Spooky Ghosts. And I'll issue a, a correction on the Twitter. Um, so Black Cat, uh, do you want to hop in a, in the NGS Discord uh, for quicker responses? I know that you said in the chat, but... Uh, things. I'm a, I'm a get into the Nexus Gaming Series uh, lobby chat, lobby one. If you want to join me, super appreciate it. If if you don't want to, I understand. Um, and I'm I'm gonna do that real quick while we get a response. All right, cool. Black Cat's gonna join for a quick interview. I'm going to tweet out a correction. Let me change the screens because, well, there's no puppy here, but let, let's go to this screen because I can still show, oh wait, game summary. I have a game summary screen for a reason. Oh, sailor, right, as the as the mouthfeel, which means Sailor Twift. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. That was that was a great set. And uh, okay, now I'm finding out that both both matches that I was looking or both Soak Every Lane matches were uncasted, and I might have to do a fourth replay today um, <laughs> because I meant to do the one that I stopped mid cast, which I don't know why you care, but I'm sharing with you anyway um, for for the production value. Um, so that was a. Uh, oh, I I mistweeted, and I'm going to uh, pay for it with my time. So, Sailor Hi. Twift, die for cat girls. Uh, mm -hmm. I every whenever I cast you guys, I'm really trying to get you all that Hollow Live sponsorship. I don't know if you yeah. saw the tweet today. We definitely appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, game number one. I, I believe this is the second time I've seen y'all go for a dartboard, which is what I call the Genji. I the Genji light bomb. Also, I think the first time I saw it, y'all tried to do it with Tyrael, and I think one other die. I think all of everyone except for Anduin was capable of delivering the light bomb. Is so? Is that a comp that you're trying to work on? Because game one did not look anything like game two or three. Was that all right? This is the first game. Let's see how this works, and then maybe we go hard game two or three. Or or what? What was the plan? It's it's just something we've been practicing, and uh, they shut it down really well, uh, which. Uh, I think the Jaina was what we figured was the main cause of it, and we banned it the rest of the series. Even yep. though, Even when though watching Jaina it back player. now, yeah, we didn't notice uh, <laughs> that they switched up their Jaina player. Uh, yeah, I've seen um, some of that happening a little bit uh, in my matches, too. I was like, crap. I've actually, yeah. I've, I've, I've definitely banned a hero that um, their player wasn't in the game. But they did, they had... Two, two or three of the same hero, or they had two of the same heroes, game two or game three from game one on different players, which we were talking about in the stream. So, um, really interesting. Okay, so, so game number one just got shut down by Jaina, even though you you were the Genji, right? Yeah, I was playing Genji. And we murdered Jaina a lot, but she'd usually, she'd usually get a big ring off before she would die. True, and then if she's able to get the blizzard on top of it, that's... Yeah, or the rest of her team cleans us up. And that, I think that happened, you know, two or three times. So even though we, we jump on her or Ana, the fight turns around. Yeah, um, getting, getting immobilized like that makes it really hard. And I just, I don't think... And it's no offense to you. I think it's just part of with how the comp worked out. The Genji doesn't have enough continued damage to follow up the Gray Main for the rest of that fight. Is that is that kind of what you what that your experience was with it, or is that? Yeah, if oh. we were gonna redraft that, we would have picked a more DPS -y off laner. I know okay. we played Sonya in the other two games, but probably could have been Sonya. Oh, instead of <laughs> I think you had Urel, right? Yeah, something like Thrall or something that contributes to the damage thrall is a sleeper i tell you what sorry the puppy i'm sh in case you're also watching the puppy has something 
knotted in his fur. <laughs> um, so game number two, Swift. That was a 12-minute Tomb of the Spider Queen. Um, how the? What was the thought when they got the first turn in compared to you getting the second and third turn in and just marching it in? The plan for that comp. I know when you were watching the stream, you watched our tank player like walk right by the turn in and not turn in on, and you were yelling at him. Uh, because we you never... wanted the second one, right? Yeah, we we never intended to turn it into level ten, uh, because we wanted the demonic invasion and Hyperion. Yeah. So we wanted to try to get the most value out of our gems. We weren't planning to like win that early. It just sort of worked out because I think they had a lack of wave clear. Yeah, they did. Um. So. Yeah, we were just trying to get more value off our turnins by holding them. So we were happy with them, you know, get taking a, a quiet defense of their first turn in. Okay. That um, that makes a lot of sense. Um and then getting a double turn in is always huge. Oh my goodness, this puppy needs to be groomed. Um sorry, welcome to a taco stream. Um the so yeah, over and I think it was just super decisive other than I wasn't really upset about the Joe not turning in. I just when when I play Storm League and I get Tomb of the Spider Queen, that's the only time that I actually, like, almost want to play Joe. And because Storm League is so insane, I'm just like, you know what? I'm not turning in until I can finish whatever turn in we're on. And so that's kind of where that 50 comic came in. <laughs> because, yeah, I found it funny. So. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad, because I'm here to entertain. Uh, <laughs> that's goal number one. Uh, but otherwise, game number two looks so clean from you guys. There were only seven kills the entire game. You'll have the map pressure. I believe you were the asthma dunk. Yeah. Um, and you were able to get your stacks, but like there wasn't a whole lot of dunking. It was just we're gonna push, we're gonna we're gonna siege, and it worked out really well. And then they tried to take that fight when y'all had the boss over at that top keep, and you and Sonia said, "Core, Asmo go core." Yeah. Oh. I was so close to getting caught in that gravel bomb. Yeah. Like a a pixel or two off, and I just said, "I'm not participating in this fight." <laughs> gonna go in the game. Um, but if I, I think if I get hit by that gravel bomb, it's a lot closer because I don't get demonic invasion off. We still have Sanya and Boss on core, but mm -hmm. yeah, but demonic uh... invasion is huge for that for that push. Uh, exactly. so, but game two, pretty pretty well done. Um, game number three, though, that was a little bit more back and forth. I uh, so secret replay knowledge. Um, I know how long the game's going to be. Uh, but I go the spoiler-free version for everything so that I, uh, although I've been told there's a way to always know no matter what, I don't want to know what that is. But um, I go the spoiler-free route so I don't know who wins, but I know how long the game is. And I try to ignore that most of the time. Uh, but even knowing how long the game was, the back and forth, I didn't know how this was going to end at all. It was a really tight game three. The kill count looks otherwise. Uh, but all of those fights could have gone so back and forth, and early on they did. At what point did y'all realize? Did y'all think, all right, this game is ours. As long as we don't give them anything else, this is ours to lose. Yeah. So early on in the game, we got pretty far ahead with like that first Punisher. But other than that, they had really, really solid defenses. Um, when we had you know the top Punisher pushing their keep, and we went one for one. You know, we we were hoping for a lot more than that. Um, but right at the end of the game, I think, is when we figured out we were going to win. Um, honestly, I thought we were going to lose the game when the oh, Haka, no. he, he hit a really big isolation. Yeah, uh, the, the hit, AoE one, right? Yeah, it hit like three of us. And that was, I went in, I called for nano boost, and he hit me and Ana at the same time, so neither of us could ult. Oh, jeez. Um, I died, but, you know... Yeah, I, that's when I, you I died right after ulting, right? Yeah, I thought we were just going to lose the game there, but we, you know, my team is good and then got kills. <laughs> and then you were uh, able to come back. Yeah, and, and clean up. Um, but, yeah, I didn't think... Janet or Malthiel. Yeah, we didn't really win until, you know, I think that, that until we get the Punisher there. Oh, good. I mean, it, it, I like seeing these games that, that close, and, it, and if when playing it, it feels that close. That's fantastic. We had a 40-minute Infernal Shrines the other day that I'm still suffering from. Um, it was, it was so back and well, it it wasn't back. It was it was a good solid lead that we could never end, and then it just turned and took another 10 minutes to to go downhill. But uh, 
so out of these games, so you talked about you took the Mount Ileana intentionally um, for the Q spam, basically, right? And so that's why you went Tormented Souls to get extra Qs off? Or what was the decision yeah. in the Mount Ile? Uh, I mean, we've run this comp before. Um, I think you casted one of those games. I think our first game of the season we played this. <laughs> Against Region Ghost? Yeah. S secret, uh, I, I'm part of the Region Network and a Region <laughs> Caster, so I, I like to pick those up. Um, yeah, and it was really, it was a really good showing. Like I was, uh, you know, the, I, I would like to see my org win, but like I was really excited to watch y'all play that that match. Like it was, it was yeah. a fun match to play, and I was sad that like the dartboard didn't work and things like that. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so so you tried something like this before? Yeah, we we've played this comp a couple times. Uh, so it's not something we run like every game or we're thinking about every game, but. It's it's a lot of fun to run when we think it'll work. Um, so you know it, and it's a lot of fun to be the mouth down there and get those high damage numbers and have people like try to five v one you. Right. Um, but yeah, it, it was you know fully. We, we the draft went I think Johanna, and then we picked Grayman and Sonya after that, and then we last picked the the mouth on Anna. Mm -hmm. So we were keeping our options open. Keep keeping that pocket pick. Yeah. In the pocket. Okay. So overall, really good set. Was there anything out of the set, especially now that you've gotten to rewatch it? Um, was there anything in particular that you thought we should draw attention to that maybe I missed while I was being goofy or just anything that you were like, this was this is worth talking about. Uh. I mean, I think uh, Uncomfortably Mom played really well, especially considering all the rule stops. They're all, like, really talented players. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the only thing I'd really want to say about the set. Uh, all right. Maybe, you know, Van, Van uh, Mr. Monkey Man's Lucio. It's pretty good. Yeah, Lucio is <laughs> nutty. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right, so also speaking of Uncomfortably Numb playing a really good set, any shout-outs that you want to do uh, since, since I have yeah. you? Shoutouts to uh, my team and Uncomfortably Numb and Twitch chat and you for oh, picking this up. <laughs> uh, it's so much fun. I was looking forward to it. Um, and also on behalf of Die for Cat Girls, shout out to Hollow Live Gaming. I hear Die for Cat Girls is looking for a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I may be, it may be uh, just me and Die for Cat Girls in on the meme, but it is now a meme. It's meme status. Uh, Thank you. So we'll try to make that happen somehow. I don't know anybody. Um, well, anyway, thanks for uh, hopping in for this, for the interview and giving us a little bit of insight into the game. I really appreciate it. I <laughs> hope you have a great Saturday. I hope you'll stay and watch the rest of these replays, but I understand that you're a human being and have, have life <laughs> to worry about. So uh, th thank you for hanging out. Let's come over. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Take care. Absolutely. You too. All right, let's hop over to this, to the uh, match screen, and the puppy left the cam. That's the problem with it. Um, <laughs> silver arrow. All right, so really tight set. Uh, two to one going to game three, coming in for die for cat girls. Really clean execution on the back end. Definitely, definitely earned the set there. So now I'm going to check the results of